The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents Life's a Circus, starring Margaret O'Brien and Pat O'Brien. Fred Allen is your host. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Now, here is your family theater host for tonight, Fred Allen. You often hear about people getting up petitions, petitions to stop one thing or do away with something else. I remember someone once wanted me to sign a petition to do away with radio comedians. Well, that's how it goes. So now I have a petition, but I don't want to do away with anything. I want to bring something back, something that should be in every home, prayer, family prayer, that traditional custom of home life, the custom of gathering our family together to thank God for his blessings and to ask his help. I believe in family prayer because I know that in a home where mother and father gather together with their children and sincerely and humbly ask God's blessing on their family, everyone finds a new source of help. There's a new encouragement for all in a family's united expression of faith in God. It would be a sad and sorry world indeed if we lost faith in God and faith in one another. It's a sad and sorry home where these things are lost. That's my petition, a petition for faith and family prayer in our homes. Fred Allen will return following tonight's Family Theater presentation, Life's a Circus, starring Pat O'Brien and Margaret O'Brien. Step right this way, folks, to the Greece you on Earth. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get your tickets to the most colossal, the most scintillating and astounding aggregation of wonders in the world. For this way to the big top, come in and see those death-defying areas. This is a story of a wonderland of a man who owned one, Pat O'Dwyer, and of a little girl who had a grand adventure in one, Penny Catherine Elizabeth Delaney. Penny's adventure in Pat O'Dwyer's Wonderland began one bright sunny morning, and the great caravan of circus wagons paraded down Winter Haven's main street. There was the blue and gold Ballyhoo wagon leading the parade. Then came the orange and green cages on wheels, filled with Bengal tigers, lions, and chattering monkeys. And following were the gilt-trimmed dressing bands, the red treasury wagon, the magnificent prancing percherons, the elegant Arabian steeds, and the lumbering elephants. And, of course, the stirring martial music blaring forth from the gorgeously scrolled band wagon. Yes, the circus has come to Winter Haven. The parade of parades is on. And there they go, past Snyder's department store, Morgan's drug store, Eastman's market, to their new circus grounds. Working on this vast acreage already are the canvas men, razorbacks, roustabouts, and gaffers. The king pole has been hauled up into place. Then comes that moment when all work ceases. Fifty straining hands grip the canvas bail rings of the big top. Then there's a shout from the boss himself. Raise the peaks! And so, the big top, that edifice of canvas, is reaching to the skies. Hey, Connors! Great Donovan! Double on canvas with short-handed... I beg your pardon? Mason! Get a dead man on that ring and it needs an anchor. I'd like to see the ringmaster. What? Peters? There's a pocket in that roof canvas big enough to cradle a water tank. Tighten it out. 
I'd like to see the ringmaster. Hey, Gus. Yeah, boss? I think we'll need some gillies to help unload the rest of the canvas. Hire a few hands. I'm going to have an early lunch in the wagon. Check me if you need me. Right, boss. Say you. Uh, what is it, Gilly? Where can I find the ringmaster? The who? The ringmaster. Uh, this circus doesn't have one, Gilly. Every circus has one. Oh, they do? Why, of course. The ringmaster runs the circus. He does. Well, uh, I'd say in that case, Mr. O'Dwyer's your man. Where can I find him? Why, you were just talking with him. Well, I declare. Well, he's in a treasury wagon, the red one straight ahead. <laughs> and, sweetheart, when you see him, don't let him tell you he's not the ringmaster, because he is. <laughs> Come in. You're the ringmaster, aren't you? Oh? Now, don't pretend you're not. What? Huh? Because I know you are. Well, now that you settle that, can I go out on lunch? Oh, sure. Gee, that sure smells good. I know what you're reading. So do I, I hope. That's Spuds, and that's Deer, and Red Tops, and that's Toppy. Hey, hey, that, that, that's real circus talk. Where'd you pick that up? I was born in a circus. Well, no trip, huh? How about some lunch? You look hungry. I am. Well, hop up on that stool. There's plenty of food for the both of us. Thank you. Now, here's some potatoes, some beef, and carrots. Save the ice cream for later. You mean topping. You don't sound like a real circus man. Uh, I'm sorry I sounded like a rube. Uh, by the way, what's your name? Penny Elizabeth Catherine Delaney. But you can call me Penny. Well, that's good enough for me. Uh, tell me, uh, what did you want to see the ringmaster about? Well, uh, don't you think that all kids should see the circus? Absolutely. Grown-ups, too. But what if they haven't any money? Oh, oh so that's it, huh? Yes, and... Uh... Say no more. Anyone born in a circus rates a free ticket. You mean an Annie Oakley? Yes, and here it is. But what about the other kids? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Wait, uh, what other kids? At the St. Christopher's Orphanage. You're from the orphanage, too? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Uh, was uh, this idea all your own? Well, uh, sort of. You see, I was born in a circus, but Evie Stokes says I don't know nothing about circuses. Mm-hmm. Uh, who's Evie Stokes? She's at St. Christopher's, too. Evie was born in a theater. Her father was a dug juggler. And your daddy? What, uh, what was he in a circus? Ringmaster? No. My mommy and daddy were on the high trapeze when they were alive. What happened to you folks? Well, my daddy was in the war. I got a medal for what he did from a general. I got it in my purse. See, here it is. Do you see, huh? Baby, he was really in the war. Your mommy? She fell from a high trap platform. Oh, I see. Uh, getting back to the ringmaster business, what made you so sure we had one? I read it in a book. <laughs> well, you didn't by any chance tell your little friends that you knew the ringmaster of this circus, did you? Well, I... I didn't say it in just that way. You know, sweetheart, this circus doesn't have a ringmaster. No? Oh, my. Oh, we'll fix that. You just go back and tell him you know the man who owns this circus. But I don't. Of course you do. We're old friends, remember? Golly, do you really own this circus? That's right. Pat O'Dwyer, ex-Razorback, pitchman, trap man, and now boss man. And to prove it, you invite Evie Stokes and all the kids from St. Christopher's as your guests. When? Well, we're here for two weeks. You name the time. Could we do it tonight? <laughs> oh, say, you really do have the circus sawdust in your blood, don't you? Okay, tonight it is. Do you think you could tell uh, Mrs. Anderson? She's the superintendent. Why, well, uh, I thought you wanted that pleasure. I, uh, I sneaked out of the building. Can't you sneak back? Yes, but, but if I tell her, she'll know I was here. You'll have to tell her about the kids coming to the circus tonight. Oh, you know, sweetheart, I've got a whole circus to set up to feed and to watch, but no, I've got to drop everything to personally extend the invitation. Well, what are we waiting for, Miss Delaney? Let's go. <laughs> Dwyer, you sure were wonderful the way you talked to Mrs. Anderson. She only said no once. That proves never take no for an answer the first time. She was so nice after you made your speech about circuses are for kids and how God wanted kids to be happy. Well, the Mrs. Andersons of the world aren't so hard to handle. It's the Penny Delaney's that give me a bad time. You're going to tell the kids about coming to the circus, aren't you? Oh, now, wait a minute. We made a bargain. You're going to tell them. It's your party. Besides, I, I got to get back to work. Uh, pardon me, boss. Why, it's Mr. Gus. What's up, Gus? Uh, hey, we're in a jam. I've been looking for you all over town. Well, Where have you, you better been? Get to me later on the way but over. I'm all right. Clear. See you under the big top. Okay. And the 
And as I was, I was down on the big top with Bonzo. All right, get to the point. Well, 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 I hear this voice in my ear, and this guy is saying, it's such a pity, the show won't go on tonight. I turn and I look down, and there's this little bald-headed Jasper. He asks for you. Well, when I tell him he ain't here, he hands me this card, and he says, uh, tell Mr. O'Dwyer that Mrs. Lafayette Winters wants him packed and off her property by this evening. Yeah, well, we'll see about that. Step on that gas. Let's see that card again. Yeah, here, boss. See, that Stanley G. Fremont, president of Winterhaven National Bank. Well, there's something screwy, something. So you're the owner of the circus, eh, Mr. O'Dwyer? That's right, Mr. Fremont. Well, you know I've always had a suppressed desire about circuses. Yeah, look, uh, about the notice. <laughs> ah, the clowns were my weakness. I always wanted to be one. <laughs> Put on funny clothes, make people laugh. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. <laughs> look, uh... About that notice you gave Gus, uh, Mr. Fremont, something about closing the circus, that's a mistake, isn't it? Oh, oh, no, no mistake. There must be. My advance man made a deal to rent those grounds for two weeks. He didn't make any deal with this bank, Mr. O'Dwyer. What's the bank got to do with it? Well, the bank handles Mrs. Lafayette Winter's affairs, and she owns that property. Look, here's a contract with a Mr. Jerome Simmons written on his stationery, Simmons Realty Company. Mr. Simmons had no authority to close such a deal. Well, there's a billboard standing six feet high on that lot with his name on it. Mr. Simmons and Mrs. Winters have been in litigation for that property since the day after Mr. Winter died. Now, the court ruled in her favor three years ago. Mr. Simmons is an old man. He still claims the property. Oh, this sort of thing happens at least every six months. Well, somebody's nuts. Precisely. Mr. Simmons. Why can't I make a deal with you for the rental of the grounds? Well, because Mrs. Lafayette Winters doesn't want anyone on her property. She's been more or less uh, a recluse for the past five years. Oh, that's great. Fine. fine. Um, why don't you uh, move your circus, Mr. O'Dwyer, to uh, another part of town? There's the uh, Hodges Tract. Mr. Fremont, do you know what work and expenses involved in setting up a circus? It's like, it's like moving a small city. Besides, I have three sheets of the town with billboards, ads, newspaper, copy, and publicity. Believe me, Mr. Fremont, i got to stay put this time or full permanently. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. O'Dwyer, but I'm only the banker. You're a citizen of Winterhaven, too, aren't you? And what does that imply, Mr. O'Dwyer? A certain responsibility to your community. Look, Mr. Fremont, the circus is an American institution. It's clean entertainment. It keeps kids off the streets. You know, it's one of the few places where I've seen an entire family together. Believe me, Mr. O'Dwyer, I, I understand, but my hands are tied. Mrs. Winters is a hard woman to deal with. Why, well, look at the way she lives. Hardly ever leaves the big mansion. Yeah, hers. I saw it. Looks like Madison Square Garden. Yes. Look, uh, how would it be if I talked to her? Oh, how could you talk to her if she won't see you? She won't see anyone. Who'd you say was the batty I'm one? I'm sorry, Mr. O'Dwyer. You'll just have to move off Mrs. Winter's property. Sorry. Tough enough taking it on the chin as far as the gate receipts are concerned, but gee, all those kids from the St. Christopher orphanage. Oh, I can't tell them it's all off. You gotta. Uh, look, after you leave me off, why don't you go over to St. Christopher's? You tell them we have to fall. Oh, uh, boss. Boss, I'd rather spend an hour in, in Bosco's land cage than to have to see those kids' faces when they hear the bad news. Well, here we are. Oh, hello, boss. Same Mr. O'Dwyer. About the new flap. Yeah, I'll uh, talk to you later. What are you going to do, boss? There's only one thing we can do. We'll try to sneak out of town quietly. How can you sneak a circus? Mr. O'Dwyer, everyone at the orphanage. Penny, what are you doing here? Oh, I came over to make sure everything was ready for tonight. Oh, uh, well, uh, Penny, I think I'd better tell you... What, Mr. O'Dwyer? Well, uh, you see, this is kind of a surprise. Oh, everything about the circus is going to be a surprise for most of the kids. They never saw a circus before. They're all washing their faces, getting into their Sunday clothes. It's going to be one big surprise. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh... Are you sick, boss? You, you look green. Shut up, will you? Okay. Oh, Mr. O'Dwyer, is there anything wrong? Uh, no. No. No, you go back and tell the kids there's going to be a special surprise tonight. Be sure they're here on time. <laughs> on time? They'll be here before the gates are open. Good, good. Goodbye, Penny. Boss, are you losing your mind? Yeah, I'm also losing my circus. Hey, what's up, boss? Anything wrong? Boys, I called you here together because I need your help. Well, I got orders to move off these grounds. I'm going to ask a favor, a real favor. These orders were to fold right away. But I'm staying open tonight. Not because it'll take me out of the red. You all know that a one-night stand can't do that. The reason I'm staying over is that I got some special guests tonight. Some very special guests. 
The kids from St. Christopher's Orphanage. Now, are you with me? Yes. Now, wait a minute. Uh, you know, the John Laws may step in, and that's where they're going may get a little tough. So if you don't want to go along with me, now is the time to step out. Well, all right. I, I never ask anyone to break the law, and I'm not going to ask it now. Just, just sort of keep them away from the big top. I guess you all understand what I mean. to see the most amazing sights of a lifetime. Limber Jim, the India rubber man. Oh, wait, little girl, you're bothering me. Now I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I told you to stop bothering me. What do you want? Where will I find Mr. O'Dwyer? Up front, just inside the entrance to the big show. Thank you very much. Okay, girly, okay. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Hurry, hurry, hurry. There's still time to see the biggest little show on earth. Hello, Mr. O'Dwyer. I've been looking all over for you. I was looking for you when the kids came in here. I got a special seat for you, right in the center box. Come on now, I better hurry. Gee, wait till Evie Stokes sees me. Aren't you going to sit with me? No, I'll be along later, honey. I uh, gotta work the front here for a while. Now, don't forget. Say, say, boss, bad news. Uh-oh, the sheriff, huh? No, no, Jumbo at the gate says there's an old dame that wants to see her. She claims she owns the lot. Oh, it must be old lady Winters. What, she won't buy a ducat? Maybe that's one way of keeping her out, huh? She alone? <laughs> With a face like that, you'd have to be. Oh, look, uh, Gus, we got a staller. Uh, should I uh, lock her in the cage next to the geek? Well, bring her into the big top, put her in the center box, tell her winners I'm supposed to be there. Yeah, and then what? From then on, I don't know. Go on, bring her in before she calls every cop in the town. Exhibition of skill and learning in the history of the world, introducing the Flying Deliverses. Gee, that's a cloud swing. Huh. Oh, hello. You know that was a cloud swing. Sheer nonsense. And that's an iron jaw act. That means they hang by their teeth. Barbaric. Oh, no. That's an iron jaw act. Don't you want to sit up here? You can see the joeys better. They're the calm policemen. You don't mind if I sit next to you? Why? I don't like to sit alone. Besides, you don't seem to know very much about circuses. And what is there to know? Oh, there's lots. You see, I was born in the circus. You mean your folks are performers here? Oh, no. I haven't any folks anymore. I live at St. Christopher's. You mean now, Saint... now, you see those elephants? That's a bull act. Were you talking about St. Christopher's Orphanage? Mm-hmm. Oh, look, right in front, that clown standing on that horse. Serves him right if he falls and breaks his neck. Oh, no, he's Pete Jenkins. He really knows how to ride that horse real well. Get yourself a taffy, a long Jim Popsicle, and that disappearing cotton candy. Oh, my, cotton candy. Hey, mister. Yes, little girl, what do you have? I'd like a cotton candy. Would you like a cotton candy, too? Absurd. They're very good. One or two? I've got money. Oh, go on, lady, have a cotton candy. Shut up. Well, one or two? Oh, two, and how much is it? Twenty cents. Hmm. Uh, well, I, I guess I didn't take any money with me. Okay, sister, give me back the candy. Oh, I've got some money. Here. Would you hold these two sticks while I get my money? Thank you. Now, where's my purse? Here you are. Five, ten, twenty cents. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, one and all. Hey, get your candy cotton and your popsicles, your popcorn and your peanuts. Oh, there's Mr. O'Dwyer. Hey, Mr. O'Dwyer. Did you say Mr. O'Dwyer? Yes, he owns the circus. Oh, he does, huh? Would you like to meet him? He's such a nice man. I certainly would. All right, come on with me. He's standing over there talking to that clown. Oh, 
Oh, brother, this is one for the books. Local banker crashes circus dressed as clowns. Well, I, 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 I hope you don't mind, Mr. O'Dwyer. Oh, no, not at all. In fact, maybe you'd like a financial interest in the show. I'm wide open for any offer. Oh, Mr. O'Dwyer. Gee, this is the best circus ever. <gasps> oh, my. This is Mrs. Winters. She wanted to meet you. Uh, Mrs. Who? Mrs. Lafayette Winters. What's your oh. name, Mr. Clown? I own this property, and I instructed Joey Mr. Fremont to have you vacate it. Uh, did you say Mr. Fremont? I, I, I'm a Joey Clown. But that's a Rubens Clown. I spoke there. to Mr. Fremont this morning, and he said he talked to you. Say, that's an this awful moment, big I nose. I wouldn't even know oh, what Fremont don't, looked don't, like. Don't, don't touch it. Oh, my word, you've pulled off my nose. <gasps> Mr. Fremont! Oh, hello. Hello, Mrs. Winters. What are you doing in that ridiculous costume? Well, I've always admired clowns, and Mr. I... Mr. O'Dwyer, I want this circus off my grounds immediately. And you, Mr. Fremont, better see to it. Or I'll change banks if I have to build a new one in Winter Haven. <laughs> My, this place looks like a museum. Yes, miss. What is it? Is this where Mrs. Winters lives? It is. I'd like to see her. I'm sorry, Mrs. Winters receives no callers. Good day. Oh, wait. I, I just got to see her. Sorry. But, but could you tell her I'm here? It's really important. Mrs. Winters is not well yet. Something she ate last night. Gosh, the cotton candy. Golly, I just got to see her. Couldn't you let me talk to her just for a minute? Just a moment. Mrs. Winters. Yes, Plannick, what is it? There's a young lady. She, she wishes to speak to you. She says it's urgent. What's her name? Uh, what is your name, miss? Penny Delaney. Miss Penny Delaney. Don't know her. Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. How, how old is she? I judge about ten years of age. Bring her up to my room. I think I know her. Yes, ma'am. This way, young lady. What did you say your name was? My real name? Yes, of course. Penny Elizabeth Catherine Delaney. Thank you. Gosh, this is the most steps I ever saw. Miss Penny Elizabeth Catherine Delaney. Mr. O'Dwyer. Oh, there you are. Okay, okay, we're packing. We're moving. You are not. What? Huh? Hello, Mr. O'Dwyer. Mr. Gus. Penny. Say, what is this? Uh, would you mind repeating what you said, Mrs. Winters? I said you're staying. She means raise the peaks. Wait a minute. Uh, let me get this in plain English. You, you mean I can stay on for the rest of my two weeks? Yes, and you can thank Penny for it. She pleaded your case most eloquently. I just told her what you caught, told Mrs. Anderson at the St. Christopher's about circuses are for kids and how God wanted kids to be happy. And you're trying hard to help us to be good and happy. Thanks, sweetheart. Thanks a lot. Well, what's the good word, boss? You heard it. Raise the peace! Walk away with it! It's in the air! <laughs> Yes, there they go. Pat O'Dwyer's circus is once more on the move. Down Main Street they go, the great circus procession. Pat O'Dwyer had promised Winter Haven a parade such as they had never seen. Every act was there, on wheels or on foot. Clowns swarming the streets, riding madly the Buffum automobiles that smoked and kept exploding before the laughing townspeople. <laughs> Tumblers aloft the flat top truck, somersaulted dizzily in the air. But wait, the parade turns away from the railroad depot and heads down Loyola Road, 
past St. Christopher's Orphanage. Then suddenly, the red treasury wagon with Penny Delaney sitting on top of it pulls into sight. Now the parade stops in front of Mrs. Winter's palatial manor, where she waits to welcome Penny. Golly. Gee, I, I guess I gotta say goodbye, Mr. O'Dwyer. You won't be lonesome in your new home, Penny? Gosh, no. It's Mrs. Winters that was so lonesome. That's why I adopted her, to try and make her happy. Well, little trooper, I know you will. You made me awfully happy. I'm not gonna say goodbye. Just so long for a while. I'll be coming back to Winter Haven. I got a girl here now. Life's a Circus has starred Margaret O'Brien and Pat O'Brien. Now again, here is your family theater host for tonight, Fred Allen. I was reading the paper the other day and saw where they're advertising new houses. The banner line read, this is the home you'd like to have. Well, I'd like to sell you on a new home today. Maybe I should say on a remodeling job that can be done in your present home. A remodeling job to make it the kind of home you'd like to have. And it's going to cost you... Well, it's going to cost you a little of yourself, a little of your time to gather your family together. That's how it's done, this remodeling, because I'm thinking about the way family prayer can remodel your home into the most beautiful place in the world. It can bring in the sunshine of God's grace and happiness and God's love and peace. It can give all these things that only trust and faith in God can give. And on this remodeling job, on this new home, there's a guarantee a guarantee that it will last not for a month, a year, or several years, but indefinitely and as long as you wish. It's a guarantee of love and understanding and happiness in a home. Here's the guarantee. A family that prays together stays together. This is Fred Allen saying good night and God bless you. Thanks to Margaret O'Brien and Pat O'Brien for their performances this evening, and to John Slott and Emil Frank for adapting tonight's play from a story by Nate Slott and Martha Chapin. Music was scored and conducted by Max Tare. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were Verna Felton, Stanley Farrar, Carlton Cadell, Dave McMahon, and Ralph Montgomery. Brief portions of tonight's program were transcribed. Next week, our Family Theater star will be J. Carol Nash, in Dear Mr. American. Your hostess will be Loretta Young. This series of the Family Theater broadcast is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program and by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need. Be with us next week at the same time when our family theater star will be J. Carol Nash with Loretta Young as hostess. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <laughs>